Have you ever seen such a thing? I'll never forget the first time I saw one. I was digging around in the Boy Scouts of America property on Staten Island and uh, it caught my eye. Not this specimen here but one very similar to it and I knew as soon as I saw it that this rock this piece of material definitely has a unique story I just knew it just by just by looking at it and and they're all very very similar to this this is really heavy and recently as of last year I found a whole bucket full again I have found them out. Really get a good look at these. I'll clean it up later. No, don't worry, Ma. <laughs> so here we are. And and notice the shapes. They're very, very smooth, very rounded. Well, they're from the Cretaceous period. And they're not from America. I found them along the New York Harbor and like I said they came they come from the Cretaceous period which is about 65 to 145 million years ago now if you could imagine if you will taking plaster of Paris and pouring it down a a burrowing animals hole and then allowing it to dry, set hard, and then dig around it. Perhaps you would find you know, many shapes like that. So, here we are in the Cretaceous period in Europe. And a geological phenomenon in the, in the chalk beds was taking place with the right type of material, the right type of timeline and pressure temperature that created these unique specimens now this is actually in my in my in in my opinion a historical artifact here in america in new york new york harbor and it is a geological phenomenon called a chert phenomenon this is a flint nodule now there there is talk that perhaps what had happened 100 135 million years ago or so is that the skeletal remains of bottom sea going creatures were decaying creating this this like gelatin ooze a silica mass that heavier than water floated on the ocean floor and worked its way down into animal burrows such as mollusk shrimp and other cretaceous uh, and other crustacean types and, and mollusk of that area and timeline and over time created this phenomenon it's only found in a very few parts of the world that i know of in europe germany and these actually came as my best knowledge from england perhaps in the 1600s 1700s they were used as ballast in the old wooden ships coming from england needing a an abundance of weight down below perhaps coming into the Americas loading up with textiles having the weight then transferred into that material and these were left off on the shore now we know that the Dutch when they first came across here they would use as ballast um, cobblestones and you know, granite blocks which to this day are lined uh, by some of the streets in uh, lower Manhattan well another interesting story about these nodules 
is that, of course, in Europe, Paleolithic human beings used them as as making tools, and it's really hard to see. I was hoping to get a, a sunny day here in, in this uh, New York weather that we been having it's been quite cold and cloudy but this is very resemblant to obsidian and as we all know it's um, obsidian was made by um, volcanic lava coming down into the sand melting the sand and turning we all know that sand you know silica is uh, you that's how you make glass so these are actually a lot like glass and sometimes you can get them to chime it's not going to be the chime that I was looking for. But, being, being said, these were made by the ancient Europeans, perhaps 6,000 years ago, or older. Uh, tips, arrowheads, knives, and other tool making. And actually, 1.5 million years ago, we all know the famous Lucy that's uh, stored here at the... Uh, American Museum of Natural History that they also found flint and quartz and other materials obsidian uh, for tool making that's 1.5 million years ago fascinating but here we are in this material here with its European uh, let's say England friends uh, for instance along the cock fields down from uh, Oh, up from Yorkshire and, 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 and down along where the uh, Dover, where the, those uh, white cock fields are full of these flint nodules. I was lucky over the past several years to have found, well, not counting this big pile, I had found about 20 and had given them away to many children for science fair science projects and uh, local teachers and other educators including the boy scouts of america and i've been mean meaning to do a video about this because they're just absolutely marvelous and fascinating pieces and it's just so hard to to really get it on film but once you've seen them, you'll you'll never forget them. I, I hope that this presentation, you know, does does its service. So, so here we are. We have a a historical artifact. We have a geological artifact, as far as it it being so rare. Hundreds of years ago, when the mines started collapsing in the uh, the chalk fields in England from Norfolk to Yorkshire, it really was quite a mystery. And then and they finally revealed the fact that these mines are some of the oldest mines in Europe and that these flint nodules were one of the first materials that were actually mined and traded. Yeah, as, as a good from travelers and the nomadic people in the Paleolithic timeline. And so I really have to say this really is an amazing treasure. I'm so fortunate to have found so many. And these will end up, you know, with children and other educators uh, from the Boy Scouts of America to college professors and everything in between. Because that is my duty as a naturalist and a, an ecologist, an explorer, an adventurer, Puma Ghost Walker, I find things all the time and I just have to share and I just feel that this is one of those just amazing finds and I feel once again just so so blessed and so honored to have found them and have done the research for them and have and put them out there because there's really not a lot of information about these flint nodules so well 
I hope this becomes a great presentation. It's difficult to video rock specimens and have them all turn out just marvelous, but till next time, thank you so much for viewing.